So we're just getting set up for everybody right now. We're just gonna let this go. Get that. My lips, this is from like wedding dryness. Wind. We're using Keynote on the iPad for this. If you guys even care, Keynote's like PowerPoint, but built into the iPad already. I think it's free. And it works well, so it took me two seconds just to write all this stuff. So, next scene, all the people are getting here. All the people. Yeah, that works. Oh, this music better not copyright my video. Okay, just ignore that. All right, welcome everybody to IPS in an hour or less. Uh, I think more people are coming. If they come, they'll just show up. We're starting a couple minutes early. After this, we're going to talk about the studio. I'll spend like 10 minutes going over the studio, how it is, what's going on, some complaints that I've had, how we're resolving it, blah, blah, blah. It involves cleaning and it involves uh, just people bitching, which is what I don't want to deal with. Yeah. That's why I went smaller. All right, so um, thank you guys for coming. This is probably the most sought after workshop, and I'll probably be doing this a couple more times over the next like six months. Um, it's modified to my style, but what I want you guys to do out of this is take what I'm teaching you guys and, and putting it into your style. The goal with this primarily is just to get you guys selling in-person sales rather than just sending out a gallery and hoping that they're going to buy stuff. Um, but I wanted to put you guys in that mentality real quick. If you guys send out your galleries to your clients, after a shoot, they had a great shoot, they had a great time, you send your gallery out, they open it up on their computer, and then the phone rings. The kids show up. There's bills on their, on their desk. I have bills on my desk all the time, I pay one bill a day or whatever like that. Whenever that happens, you lose them. And it's not because, what up, Mike? Okay, we're just talking before we talk. Take your time. Um, you're, you lose them, and it's not because they don't like your work, it's the simple fact that they are just busy and they just put it to the side. Does that make sense? So if you don't get in front of them and give an opportunity to buy right in front of you, you're doing them really a disservice. So I want you guys to remember that. In-person sales is for them, not for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So from now on, every shoot you guys do, you're gonna have in-person sales is the goal after this. Um, I also want you to think about most of you probably do what we call a shoot and burn, which means we shoot and then we upload to a gallery and then they get them all. Or you put them on a disc or you put them on a CD or something like that and they get them all. And it's easy. Maybe you're charging two, three hundred bucks for that and you leave and you're like, I just made three hundred bucks off of a session. Awesome. Well, what do you think they do with those digitals? They don't print them. They get them printed. Well, would you say they don't print them? Yeah. They most likely don't. Yeah. I've had a lot of... Right. And yeah. why... So let's talk about that. If they don't print them, why don't they print them? They, uh, they either don't know where or how or... Right, yeah. too much work, they you know, maybe don't understand copyright, they'll just take it to Costco, whatever. And it's, this is not a debate about quality versus quality, Costco versus MPix Pro or quality, you know, whatever. It's not a debate about that. It's just about you finishing up your job. Mm. Um, it's like buying a new car and then having them detail it at the end. What's up? Hi. What are you doing, just hanging out? Yeah. Come on in, we're just doing a pre-talk before we start. Uh, anywhere you want. Maybe like right there would be perfect. How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you again. It's been years? Yes. Maybe a little under. A little under? Okay. I didn't know like when you were, when you graduated or anything, so. Next just year. You, know. you graduate next year? Mm -hmm. Oh, so I, you were, I was just there. Yeah. Oh, I thought you already graduated. Oh. Okay, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, so... That's our job is to end. So if you give them a CD of all the images, they don't print them. It's not because they don't like your work, it's just they don't print them. I mean, how many times do you take a picture on your phone? How many of you literally go out and print the images from your phone? And it stays on your digital and nothing ever happens to it and it sucks. But let's say that you give them the CD and they want to print, where do you think they're gonna go? Costco. Costco, and they're gonna print up. And why are they going to Costco? 
because they don't know any other, they don't know that our prints are better than Costco prints. They just go, oh, he gave me the digitals for three, you know, I paid 300 bucks, so I got the digitals. I'm going to Costco. Mm -hmm. You're doing them a disservice because then they go to their house, you look at their pictures on the wall and they're full of shit. Mm -hmm. The pictures are crap. You're like, I didn't edit it like this. Like, why is it like that? And you can't really say anything. So today we're just gonna talk about how to sell on the tail end. So you can take that 300 session and now double it to a 600 session. So if you're only doing five portraits a week, making 1500, you can now make five portraits a week at $3,000, all because you offered them what they wanted from the beginning. I don't take my steak to a steakhouse and ask them to cook it. They have to have that steak there for me. I order a filet, they have the filet in back. It's not like I bring the filet for them and say, can you please cook this and show me your art. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We're finalizing what we're doing and you guys need to just remember that. We're finalizing what we're doing because so many people are afraid of selling and my technique is not about selling, it's about offering them what they already want, giving them a price for it, and then just letting them bring it in. Cool? All right, we're getting started, kids. Seven Oak Trace. I'm gonna do this. YouTube, this is YouTube, everybody. Okay, so, whenever you do in-person sales, you have to be prepared before. Um, there's nothing like having sticker shock whenever you are trying to sell somebody something. Um, and what I mean is you invite them to a viewing and if you just start talking to them and pull out a pricing sheet, they will go, oh shoot, we have to buy stuff? Wait, what do you mean? I didn't bring any cards, I didn't bring any cash, and I didn't know. And if you get in that position, you've already messed up. Oh yeah, well I'll send you, I'll send you a digital, I'll send you an invoice and we can pay later and then they, you send them an invoice they never pay, right? What up? Hey. What up? Find a home. I didn't want to get in front of the Oh, fair. <laughs> Anywhere you want, dude. Keep it cash. Um, so here's a few things that I do. So we're going to talk about weddings and portraits, and we'll kind of talk them together. They're all about the same. This is going to be more targeted towards portraits because most of you guys shoot portraits rather than weddings. If you shoot weddings, I'll show you guys a different version as well of what I do. So the shoot is over, right? Um, you edit the photos. You create a proofing gallery, whatever you want to do. A proofing gallery is a gallery that of unedited photos that you like. It's maybe 100 to 120 images that they're going to choose from. Then you're going to edit later when they purchase them. Or a full edit gallery as you do a family session. You edit them all. You put them in a gallery because you have the time or you hope that they're going to buy it. Or maybe it was an easy edit or something. I do both depending on what it is. If it's a headshot, proof gallery. I'm not going to edit all their faces and show them 20 images. I'm going to have them pick the ones they want pay me in front, and then I'm gonna edit those photos and deliver it to them. That's a proofing gallery. I can also get that out very, very, very quickly within 24 to 48 hours. Do you do that on Zenfolia? I, I, yeah, I, I just create a gallery and I just label it proof at the end through Zenfolia. I mean, it's then, the same gallery, nothing changes in gallery wise, I just tell proof, and then I have a custom template email that goes out and says, hey guys, these are just proofs, they are unedited photos, this is what you need to do X, Y, Z, and typically with headshots, I don't do an in-person viewing because they don't have time, I don't have time, I can do it via email but they're ha they have to buy products for me. I mean, they have to. Um, also, the guys, the way I charge, I'm sure most of you know, I'm an a la carte photographer, which means I charge for the session fee and they get me for the time, they get me for the shoot, but they don't get anything after that. They don't get no products. So there's nothing already included, which means they have to buy through me. And that's how I do it. If you guys are including things in there, then this is just an extra way to sell and just to say what's up. So you've created your gallery, you now send them an email. Or a phone call or an email. You'll send them an email. Do an email. Um, you'll send them an email, and the email is going to be very simple. It's going to be, hey, guys, I'm so excited. I have your photos ready for a viewing. I would love to schedule this time for you to come into the studio, into my studio. We'll have some drinks. We'll have some snacks. And I want to show you the photos and let you guys pick and let you guys order the photos there. We're telling them they're ordering in the email. Here's a copy of my pricing sheet that you're going to be ordering from which are these. I have a wedding one and a portrait one and a canvas one or whatever. They see these now in their mind. They go, okay, shoot. So four by six, I get, and then they're kind of calculating what they're going to spend, what they're going to look around. Look around your house. Make sure you have room for these amazing prints. There's going to be a lot of them. I take cash, check, or credit card, and everything that day will be 15% off with an option to buy full price later on. We are fully disclosing everything that we are going to be doing. So by the time they walk into there, it's a sales present. We know this. We're not selling to them. They don't come in going, what's going to happen now? It's not like a freaking, when I went to Cabo, going to this place, the timeshare, and I can never leave. Yeah. Freaking Cabo. 
and I can never leave. And then they call me white trash. And then I was like, oh, and then the nice guy came who had an Australian accent. Apparently he was part of the scheme too. I bought nothing, FYI. But I got $400 in credits. <laughs> um, just took six hours. So the goal is, is that we are telling them everything up front. Now how relieving is that for you guys by the time the client comes in, they already know that they're gonna buy. So when they come in, they sit down and I go, hey, um, did you guys print that out? I have a copy of this. You guys think, look at the prices and all that, blah. Now let's talk about your photos, blah. So we can go from there. So that email prior, make sure that they bring money. It makes sure that they know that they're here to sell. Um, and a few other things. So the email is just basically what to expect, right? Um, it also confirms an appointment as well. So basically in your email, it'll, I have a template and I just input everything in. I use Pixify, but if you just use a Word doc, copy, paste into your email, input the things that you need to, double read it, send it out. Um, I highly recommend creating templates for these because it's a lot of info and you don't want to retype it every time. Make a template, put it on Word, copy, paste into email, done. Whatever, super simple. Um, you need to confirm this appointment. You need to book it out in the studio. Make sure that they know. I confirm um, anywhere from three to seven days in advance. Seven days is amazing. Um, but of course, if it's like tomorrow or whatever, make sure you confirm with them, make sure they're gonna be there. Um, uh, in that email, you're gonna remind them on payment and you're also going to ask them or remind them who is coming. I just have a huge, don't bring your kids. Um, I mean, if you guys have the means to have like another person here with you to babysit and watch the kids, cool but don't bring the kids. It's a sales presentation. You want them, your full attention on them. You don't want the kid running around. You don't want the kid going, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, feed me. Um, and then all of a sudden you lose their attention, right? But those that have kids kind of understand. So um, make sure. And if they have to book it around a different time, then my kids are here to be like, you know what? It, we just want your focus. So I'd rather you not have your kids. Um, is there a better time without your kids? Or I can even get somebody. I can hire a baby. I mean, if you think you're gonna make money, hire a babysitter for 10 bucks to come hang out at the studio and rock that out. But it's so, so important that you don't have kids running around because that's going to detour, detour your plans of what they're buying. Um, make sure that you have soft drinks, coffee, whatever. We have a coffee maker here, that's why I have that. I think I'm the only one that uses it. But I put coffee in there and use it. I put coffee in there, sodas in there. I just go to 7-Eleven, go to the store. 7 Eleven's up the street from here. And I just grab waters and whatever. Even if we have water, I just grab it, throw it all on the table, snacks, candy, chocolate, whatever, stuff that I like. Throw it on there, and that way they have something to snack on and go through because guess what? Sometimes they come and they're hungry, especially after work. And then if you can alleviate that hunger for just a little bit, they're more off to stay and be a little more focused when buying stuff. This is all before. This is all your planning, your process. You have everything set up. I have this little iPad thing. I use my iPad for it. You can use a laptop. Anything that you can show photos with, whether it's slideshow or not, the iPad, iPhone, all the eyes have integrated. As long as you get them into your photos, you, it'll automatically slideshow for you. Um, a Lightroom on your laptop will automatically slideshow for you. If you have to, you can take this stupid thing into the other room and do that. Just plug it in when you're done. Uh, I don't know if I have Lightroom on there, so. Do you use Zen fully on your iPad? No, I just use, um, when I do mine, I just go into photos. And, and so you, you like uh, this. export a gallery. I export, yeah, export in and then I sync this into my computer. And then in the, the photos option, when you go into iTunes, mm -hmm. it says uh, sync from my photos, sync from whatever, and you can pick the folder. So you select the folder, and then I have one that's called iPad on my desktop. Mm -hmm. So I just drag and drop into there. So this, was, this is all in my iPad, and this is from a wedding. So basically, I just do this, and then I can just go into slideshows at the top right there. Slideshow, and that's it. While you're in here, you can make it go faster. I can put La Musica on there if I want. My logo, and then it just goes through. This is how I do weddings. I'm not selling each individual image because they purchase it, so we'll get into that in a little bit. But basically, it's, it's just a slideshow. If you guys are doing family portraits, you guys can even just finger it if you want. Like, as you're sitting there, you can just have, I usually just like watch the people, and I'm like, and if they're bored, I'm like, and if they're sitting there like, oh my God, and I'm like, yeah, this is an amazing image. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so say they're like, I want to buy that image. I, I love that image. How you have your sales sheet. So the first time around, and actually we'll get into that right now. All right, go. So, all right. So, so far we are setting up, um, this is a day of setup now. So we got, we, we're planning and everything. So now this is our focus, right? Everything's pre-purchased. You're ready to go. You're excited about selling. They already know they're paying for shit. They've booked the appointment to pay for shit. They're going to pay for shit. 
It's gonna be up to you to completely fail. The only way you're gonna fail is if you go in and say, I can't take payment. I don't want your money. That's it, right? Um, for me, at this point, I've already made $95 from their session fee. They have no products. I have to rely on my doing this in order for me to make more money. So whether it's having a pricing sheet or something like that, one of the things you guys need to have is just a simple pricing sheet. You guys can pass these around if you want. Basically a Word doc, an Excel spreadsheet or whatever, um, file name, price, maybe discounted price and quantity, and then total. So you can total everything up at the end. You're gonna have to be very quick, use your, use your phone and just total up things at the end. Can I take a photo of this? Yeah. I have a bunch of them too, so. <laughs> but just make it for yourself. So all I have on there is the products that I offer, how, and for, and I, you know, just total the price, that's all it is. It's just a simple, you guys did this in elementary school, super simple, nothing crazy. So um, what I want you guys to remember is a few things. Smells, food, drink, and sounds. These are the four things that you're gonna need within your presentation that, that don't mean a lot to them, but will ultimately mean everything. Um, I have candles in my locker. Uh, that I used to leave out and they used to just be missing all the time. So just buying like a really good candle from like Bath and Body Works, just having it in there, lavender, vanilla, just making the room smell really good. Um, having snacks, uh, sweet and savory snacks. Having drinks, I always have water, but then you can have some coffee, make sure if it's supposed to be hot or cold, make sure it's that. And then um, sounds. So basically like you can, if you have a little Bluetooth or whatever, you can just kind of stream that in the background, just nice music for them to hang out to. And really all this is, is we're creating an atmosphere of home. We're creating this atmosphere of, hey, I know Jeremy, I know who he is, this is cool, you know, whatever, he's playing reggae, punk. He doesn't play that. <laughs> he does not play that. Um, pricing sheet, and of course you're gonna need your images to show somehow, right? Um, I highly recommend, uh, before you do this, make sure you test out your slideshow options. Don't come in here 10 minutes before, set everything up, and then try to play your slideshow on the TV and nothing works. Remember, we have everything for HDMI onto the TV, so you have to be able to plan. For the iPod, I have this little HDMI to Thunderbolt thing. So you have to figure out if you have a laptop, if you have an HDMI port, you don't need anything. But if you have something else, you have to figure out how to actually get it from this to the TV. So plan on that as iPad Pro just for presentations. And then I used to do them at weddings. I used to play slideshows at weddings, and I stopped doing that this year. Which is nice. Who's super late? All right. Super late. <laughs> How are you, hey, buddy? But I brought food. So. Yes! <laughs> Have a seat. Get comfy. Uh, sorry. How are you? Oh, you're fine. I knew you were coming. Because we're going to talk about studio stuff. I'm going to open this up. There's plates over there. Plates? Over there. Yeah. Plates. <laughs> um, all right. So we have images. So this is actually really important, and nobody ever thinks about this. Whenever you uh, start a presentation with anybody, start a meeting, the first 15 minutes of all my meetings are bullshitting, talking, asking them how they are, how, you know, what are some questions that you guys can ask your portrait clients in that first 15 minutes to get them talking? How's the weather? How's your day? No, no, no. How's <laughs> work? How's your day? Simple stuff? How's the traffic? What's the most obvious one we should be asking? Are you excited? Yeah, are you excited? How was the shoot? How was our shoot together? Sometimes they're like, the kids will not stop talking about it. Daryl, he said he hated photos, but you made it amazing. It's stuff like that, and you're like, oh, thanks so much, Daryl. Be ready to buy shit. Side note, <laughs> while during the shoot, I always make jokes of, this will be an amazing canvas on your wall. You should get like a 40 by 60 on your wall. And I always put this in their mind. They're, they're ready to buy, you know? That's why they hired you guys. They hired you to buy photos for their walls. So I'll joke about that. Oh, you wanna make this like an eight by 10? This would be super cool in a wall and on the desk. We should do a sexy one for hubby. Whatever, jokes like that. But then all of a sudden it comes back and they go, that makes sense. Like we should make a book out of this. That's we should do that. do that. Yeah, that <laughs> giant ass canvas. That's like 15 years ago I did that. So they, yeah. back in those days it was like a thousand bucks to do that. I believe it. Yeah. It's, I mean, we, I would charge a thousand, but yeah, it's cheaper to get now. I think a 40 by 60 through CG Pro Prints is like 400 to buy a size like that. And I sell it for 1500. And I've only sold one. And then I sold another one, but that was to me. Because it was a two for one sale. Um, so the first 15 minutes, we're just asking questions, right? We're just talking and we are just figuring out um, how their day's going. Let them decompress a little bit. While that's happening, I usually just have one image on the, um, on the wall. It's just something like this. That's not that. Something like this, where it's just sitting there. 
you can throw hatch in there, you can throw your logo, you can put your logo and say commercial wedding, travel, whatever, whatever. just something that sits there for 15 minutes that involves you. Or it can be like, welcome, Jones family. Depending on how much time you have to set this stuff up, I don't have that much time, so this is just one thing that sits on my iPad, and I don't want to do a per. But this is your chance to be creative or do whatever you want to do. Um, I know some people will have uh, the first image be um, the, the Jones family. Thanks for coming. I hope you guys love this. And then they keep going from there. So it's just depending on how you guys do it and how, how knowledgeable technology you are. This is all can be done from the iPads, the computers. There's apps built for this. It's all done. Um, but that's where you're at. So can I ask a oh God, that's, that's crazy it. question? What's the resolution on these images uh, that you're uploading? Your uh, I do a Lightroom. I have the 50%. Because if you have 2,000 images. Yeah. The iPad um, already uh, reduces everything for you. Automatically oh, does really? it. Okay. Yeah, even full raw files. Oh. Yeah, within a limit. So I've never had an issue with this, but I use delete apps. You know, delete apps if you need to. That's what I'm nervous. Yeah, yeah. But um, I literally just use this for this. And I watch Netflix at home when I'm editing, which is what I was watching. It wasn't sexy, it was sex scene. It was in a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dear White People. That's what I'm watching right now. And it's amazing. Um, so the first 15 minutes, that's what we're doing. We're talking, offering them drinks. You're sitting down having a drink. You're relaxed. You're not going, hey, how's everything going? You're sitting there just chill, just hanging out. And then they're just getting to know who you are again as a person. They already know who you are. You're just saying what's up. We did this viewing with the family, right? With your whole wedding family, like a whole bunch of people in that room. And we just took a second to be like, how was the wedding? What do you guys think? Instead of just, all right, let's get this going. I gotta make some money. I gotta go home. I got things to do. And even though that's how you feel, that's how you have to schedule it. I schedule every uh, viewing for an hour full, a full hour. Mm -hmm. And then I usually take the full hour to do it because we're talking as if they're buying. I mean, if it's like an hour and a half, they're buying a lot of shit. They're sitting there going like, how many of these, do we need to get one for like Sally? Do we need to get one for, you know, like, yeah. Sally needs one. Everybody needs a Sally. Sally needs three. <laughs> Get Sally everything. <laughs> now is the first chance to start seeing the photos. I pull it to music. Now, there's two different ways to do this. On my questionnaire for weddings, I ask them what their first dance song is. If it's a song that I can pull, usually from iTunes or whatever, then that first dance song is going to be their wedding. It's going to be the song throughout the entire slideshow. And I don't tell them that, but I ask them what it is on their questionnaire. A portrait, I have 20, 30, 40 songs that I get on iTunes, Spotify, that are acoustic, maybe um, acoustic covers, um, anything by Ed Sheeran, just, you know, Gravity was my one for a long time. I don't know how to sing it. Um, but you play, these, you play these soft songs that add an emotional high to it. Nothing fast, nothing crazy, something that you can listen to and feel like an emotional as you're looking through images. Find four or five songs that you can leave on at all times that you memorize and always pull it up and play that. Um, it helps a ton. Music is like money. Music is key to everything for all these. Um, you play the slideshow, you turn on the music, and then you shut up. You just sit there. You watch their responses. I sometimes sit behind them, sit next to them, I kind of do this. Um, I have tissue on the table, some napkins or tissues. Um, I have tissues on the table because if they start crying, that's a good sign. You know, weddings, they'll start crying, and I'm like, yes. Um, as long as they're your images, it might be somebody else. Right. <laughs> yeah, as long as they're crying for the right reason. <laughs> Double chins everywhere. Oh no. I'm like, oh, I thought you wanted extra. I know. That's what I'm always scared about. Get out. Not on ours. So, slideshow music, shut up. Simple. You, it'll probably take you. So, my slideshow, my, my images run maybe three to five seconds per um, 100 images. will take you maybe about um, just under 10 minutes or so to do. Um, you can throw in your logo after every maybe like 30, 40 images if you want, just to kind of break it up, or a little saying or something as you're going through, you know, family is gift, family, whatever, just little stuff. And because that's a slideshow. So if you add 10 more images of your own that you add to everything, that's kind of cute, especially if it fits your brand. I don't do that because I'm not cute in my photos. Like my photos are, are done. So that's just how I live my life. Um, pretty self explanatory here. Yeah. Um, so they've seen the slideshow. And I, sorry, I dim the lights when they start the slideshow. I turn the lights on. Um, and I always ask them, how does that make you feel? How do they make you feel? Not, what do you think of the images? It's like, how do they make you feel? And that question is, is crazy because they go, that made me feel happy. 
that brought me back to the moment that made you know that made it all worth it the, the shoot you have them there they're like awesome cool I'm like I and then I then we start talking about maybe the shoot or the favorite images or did you guys see something you loved or blah 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 as you're doing this is when you pull out your pricing sheet you can get software um, made for the eyes made for Apple um, you can use a Lightroom itself and basically you're gonna do another culling process another breakdown process of the photos so say you have a hundred photos your job is to narrow it down for them right there so all I do is a very simple thing I have an app on here um, you proof and this is if you have an iPhone or an iPad um, basically I haven't used this a long time here uh, yeah sure whatever so this would be an, another gallery you're importing to your iPad this is the same gap yeah so maybe you can actually import this directly from your photos Oh, from the so this is an app. app. I don't use this. This shoot was two years ago. FYI. Oh God, do something. So if you notice, there's a plus. Uh, uh, yes, maybe. No, that's all it is. It's just I, I spent like forty bucks on this thing. I shouldn't have. Um, but what I do at this point is I just sit with my client and it's, imagine you have Lightroom and you're just going, you know, you're sitting with your your laptop and you're talking to them and I'm like, just look at the screen and tell me what you think, yes or no. And then they go, yes, no, I don't like that. Cool. And then we just kind of keep going through it. By the time you're done with this, this is a lo probably the longest process. You guide it as fast as you can. I always say, just give me instinct, guys. Uh, give me instinct. Tell me what it is. When you're done, um, you'll then have a uh, maybe a no pile. These were all their no's. So we were able to bring it down. So they didn't like these. They got married. I did not shoot their way. But these are all their no's. So then what we do is we just go into their... Oh God, we go into their, oh, I turned those on to yes. So we go into their yes pile and then we start converting from there as well. Ooh, that looks bad on there. It looks way better on here, FYI. Um, but five, one, you can X, yeah, you can select. Um, I would do one and five on Lightroom. And then basically as you're going through, go through one, five, one, five, and you can put it on the split screen or you can just do go into your library module and just do the, the big one only. And then basically, um, what do you think of this? Like or no? And then if they don't like it, hit one. Next one, what do you think about this? And then just keep going back and forth. By the time you're done, 100 images go down to 50. Uh, and then do it one more time with the 50 that you have. So those are all five ratings. And so basically you just keep going and then you put them to one. Hopefully your goal now is to bring it down to 30 for them. You need to bring this number down because it's very easy for us to say no when we get overwhelmed. If I ask you 12 questions before you walk into a restaurant to eat, you're gonna go, no. Like, how many people? Where do you wanna sit? Do you wanna sit over here? Do you guys like steak? Do you wanna eat steak? Do you wanna order steak right now? Uh, no, I'm going over here, right? Too many questions makes people say no. You need to ask them a simple yes or no question every single time. Do you like this? Yes or no? Cool. Basically, if you bring it down to 30, instead of them thinking about 100 to 120, 150 photos to purchase, they're only now thinking about 30. And that's way more reasonable for them. And, and, and in fact, their price mind goes, it's not going to cost that much. 100 images would cost a lot. 30 images, okay. And the guys usually like, okay, that's better. That's 30. I got school. So basically, you have all your yeses. They're done. Um, this is when you now pull out your pricing sheet. So we kind of went through this pricing sheet. And all I do is I keep this pricing sheet and I kind of sit with them. And I go, all right, well, let's start going through these images. Each image has a file number in Lightroom, and this one I can't see the file number, so I think there's a way to do it. I had to like finagle it. Um, but in Lightroom, you guys see the file number. And so basically you have a section for file number, quantity, price, and maybe a discount price. If you guys do a discount the day of. They don't get that discount after. You'll send them the gallery. They can buy whatever they want after, but it'll be not 20% off, not 15% off anymore. The goal of that is that they purchase at that time, right? That's the only reason you give them a discount. So basically you can go, they go, all right, you like this image. Awesome. Uh, let's just go back to this, I guess. Uh, okay, cool. You like this image? Uh, what size would you like? I have four by six, eight by 10, and they've already seen this, so they're kind of thinking, cool, let's do that. How many would you like? Cool. And you do that with each image. What size? How much? What size? How many? What size? How many? What you, size? How many? You're writing down. I'm writing down every time. So I just have one through like 20, and then I'm like, all right, image number 13. Four okay, by so six. you do write down the... I'm writing everything down, yeah. And I'm looking on my computer as I'm doing it. You guys like this? Yeah. And then they're like, yeah, I don't really like that that much. Okay, cool. Let's go to the next one. 
Um, if you do this correctly, you should make, I want to say 400% of your sales, but it depends what your sales are. Um, when I do this, I make our average of 600 to $1,000 per portrait session. Yes, I can offer a package of $600 that they get X amount of images, but for somebody that comes in, they automatically already don't want to spend 600 bucks. If I say, yeah, my package is $600, they go, oh my God. Or what if I was like, hey, my session is $95 and you buy what you want after. Little do they know they're gonna spend another $600, <laughs> right? Because they see the photos. It's hard to buy something you haven't seen. What if I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you a Toyota Tundra. It's gonna be amazing, it's awesome. It's 2017, it's amazing, $20,000 but you have to pay me first. And you're like, shit. But then you see it and it's, and it's like amazing. You're like, oh crap, I should have bought it. But that's not how it works, right? So if they're hiring you for the first time, especially, especially if you don't have a name out there, they're just gonna look somewhere else. I got a buddy that can do it for 200 bucks. And that's why that happens because they don't trust or value your work. So that's why I do session fee. I get them in and then also- I don't know how long it stopped. Parker, tall heartbeat. Um, if they, if, um, if you say, Hey, you have to pay me $95 during the viewing, then that $95 on top of whatever they thought they were going to spend. So money spent is money forgotten. Get the money before your sessions. If you can, um, it's a great, great thing. Gift cards, same thing. People forget. Even if you're like, Hey, buy a gift card now. It's 50% off. Spend 200 or $200. It'll be a hundred dollars. Take that now. And by the time they go and actually pay for stuff, they forgot that they actually spent that even though they have it. And then they can start from scratch. It's a pretty cool thing. What, what happens if, so, somebody's giving you the hard sell, and they, they say, you know, like, is there any way you can lower this or do it? No. Any, how do you navigate that no. question? You just say no? No, yeah. Yeah, I mean, th that's, that's the discount. Like, yeah, I'm doing this for you. This, but I just say no. I'm like, this is my prices? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like no, I'm, you know, I, I'll joke with them. I'll be like, no way. Like, this is my prices. You guys knew about it. Whatever. But yeah, you can say I'm offering 20% off today. This is, this is the deal of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it rarely ever happens. I don't know if I just put off that, like I'm not gonna negotiate with you vibe, uh -huh. but I don't even negotiate with people. Like even like when I was in Mexico, $20 for a plate. When we went to Hard Rock, yeah. those freaking plates that they made for me of like the Dodgers, yeah. the Doyers. <laughs> they're like, she was like $20 each. 20. And then I like, we were going back into dinner at the Italian place. And somebody's like, I just bought one for 10 bucks. And I'm like, I didn't even try. I just paid her 40 bucks for two plates. But I, that's just my like thing. I'm pretty sure I got robbed. You gotta learn in other countries. I know. I was looking for Mota, but they didn't give me any. And in uh, Cabo, they come with like a, a pipe, like filled already. And they're just like, Mota? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Puerto Vallarta. I was like, where's that guy? Where's the guy? He was not there. Um, all right, how are we feeling so far? Is this pretty simple? Yeah. So we go through the slideshow, we go through it again and make them pick their faves. Don't show them the ones they don't like anymore. And you do that in Lightroom. I do that with whatever software you have. I use this system, uh -huh. but you guys can use Lightroom. Lightroom might be easier because it's already there, you guys know how to use it. Uh, just depends, but you have to practice on it, whatever it is first. Now this might not be good for this conversation, but uh, if I, I work at a home station and mm -hmm. then I have a laptop, how do you... Do you copy the entire gallery? Do you? No, um, no, you would just, I mean, it, it's, honestly, to be easy, I would just throw it onto a flash drive and then put it onto your computer and upload in your uh, laptop Lightroom. Just, just, JPEGs just that or gallery. Something yeah, then, just small J, just so they can see it. And then, and then, because the numbers are really what's your. The numbers should be, the file number should be the same, everything should be the same. Mm -hmm. Lightroom, once you have one copy, you get three copies, three uh, copyrights with it, so you can put it onto like two other laptops too. Mm -hmm. You have to buy another, you don't have to buy another Lightroom. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Uh, yes. Just in the Creator Cloud creates its own file within your, your computer. Uh -huh. Everybody's being um, shy, so I'm going to go around the screen. So you have PC or Mac? Uh, Mac. Um, they'll create a file, and it literally says the Adobe Creator Cloud, and you put it in there, you can access it from anywhere else. Right, any of your. Yeah, yeah oh, that's the beauty of the cloud. So play with it. I mean, yeah. I know you're a techie guy, so play with it, make <laughs> sure it works. But for me, like, yeah, if it didn't work, literally export onto my desktop. Yeah plug the thing in, and then put it back into my laptop, upload it from there, and now I have it with me. Yeah, what's, what's driving me nuts is, so I'm editing, and I use the star rating to edit. Uh, right, and those will convert over as well on your yeah. metadata. And then, and then when people want to buy them, I, I don't know what to do. Use colors, use whatever. Yeah, oh, this is perfect. Uh, yeah, you can, I mean, you can categorize Lightroom with colors, you can do numbers, you can do 
reject or not. Mm -hmm. um, as long as, once it goes on to, I mean, you can even just turn them all into zero stars. Yeah, because my problem is I have two galleries with two different sets of right. star ratings. So my Lightroom on my laptop that I use mm -hmm. is just to do that. Once it's done, I delete the gallery completely. I delete the catalog completely. Ah. And I just use it to show photos. I just use it to, when I need it, I don't edit on that Lightroom. I don't do anything like that. It's just to put it up in there. Perfect. And then I, I take it out. Awesome. Thank yeah, so I don't use that. That's not my final edit. I don't sit there and do that. Cool. Um, Play with it and figure out how you do it, but you need them. You need to be able to yes or no the images. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Um, so, you're going through everything. You're hanging out. Um, with weddings, are a little bit different, guys. So, my wedding is an all-inclusive package, if you will. $4,000, $5,500 for my weddings. And basically, they get all the images. But that doesn't mean I can't sell them at the end. So, what they get from me is they get a print credit. They get an album that we're going to work on later but they don't get any canvases. Uh, they don't get any additional albums, maybe for mom, for dad. We call those parent albums in my world. I first mostly love meeting with my couples after a wedding because I get to then talk to them. All of my weddings, future weddings, come from referrals of past weddings. So um, I have shot their wedding, I met them before, we hung out before, we did their engagement, all that stuff. After the wedding, I wanna bring them back to the studio and just say, hey, how was the wedding? How was your honeymoon? How was everything? Um, how was I? Was, you know, what happened after the wedding, after I left? What, you know, and just to talk to them, because I've become their friend at this point. <coughs> but I do want to sell to them as well. So my emails are also the same, but I offer something a little different. If you guys looked at my wedding one, I don't know if you guys noticed that, it's a lot smaller. All I focus on are what we call parent albums, which are duplicate albums of what we're going to create in the future. Um, so basically, like any book, if I order one, it's a price. If I order more, it's discounted. I tell them that I give them the discount for that. But like basically, I can sell another 12 by 12 of the exact same book. I already all work. Just order two, and I charge them $1,000 for it. And so they pay me that day. When, the, when we order the books, I order two. Done. Um, and then I focus on canvases. And that's all I focus on. So I have a ton of canvases in there. Listen, I don't want my couples coming into a wedding preview, and I call the wedding ones preview rather than a viewing, because I'm only showing them 150 images um, that I randomly selected, um, and maybe a mock album. Uh, if you have, if you, I have Kiss, if you have software that make an album online, you can put a mock album together and show them what it looks like. You can do as many images as you want, but I do 150, but that's also because I edit anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 per 10 hour wedding. So 150 is about 10% of my photos. Um, I don't show them anymore because it's a preview and that still takes 15, 20 minutes. Um, I don't want them coming in and ordering a thousand four by sixes through me. Um, they already have a copyright to the photos. They can take those to Costco and do that. That's not where my target money is coming from. My target money is coming from large scale prints, low quantity, but high money. So basically I can sell them one 24 by 36 canvas for $450. I would have to sell them a hundred four by sixes to get to that rate. Why would I even do that? They have, they can do, they can go to Costco and do that's what they paid for. So if I'm sitting in there and I go, all right guys, take a look at the walls, uh, see what canvas size you like and we'll kind of go from there. And then they go, I like a 24 by 36, I like this. I'm like, cool. So the only difference that I do with weddings is that they don't see all of their photos then. There's no way that they're gonna know which photo goes where. So I do what we call a pre-sale on my canvases which is what this is called. One day sale only, one day pre-sale only must be, paid, uh, must be paid in full during preview session. They already have a copy of this before they came in. I have three more printed on nice paper for them. They buy these canvases now, they pay for them now. I log them when they're ready and they see all their photos, then they can actually go back in and say, Jeremy, that 24 by 36 we wanted, I want image number 471. Then I order it and send it to them right away. That's how I do it. So I tell them, and it makes it a lot quicker. You don't have to know the image yet. You just have to know where it's going, and you have to trust that you're going to have an amazing shot that goes up there. And the preview is going to show some epic shots already. Their sneak peek on, on Facebook is going to show some epic shots already. So they already know. There's already a couple that we're going to want on the walls, and that's what we do. So I can sell. Um, so for instance, um, at the old studio, uh, another member uh, made the comment where he couldn't sell high-end weddings. He couldn't sell products after because of the studio, because it was a warehouse and it was hatch. Um, a week later, I made a $10,000 sale after a wedding. They already paid me $4,000. They ordered four parent albums and like 13 canvases. Uh, it was a $10,000, like 20 cent sale, like literally $10,000 and 20 cents. And so I was like, well, I mean, I don't know if I'm special, 
But I just made a ten thousand dollar sale in a place where nobody can apparently sell anything. It's the snacks. It's the snacks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the freaking candle. <laughs> and you know, the snacks what cost me fifty bucks, if that. Like if I go big, sometimes I buy like some really good like muffins from like Batch, and I put them out. Uh, that one I don't think was special. That was like the gas station, the Chevron next to uh, across from Jack's is where I always went, and I would get like popcorn. I would get like popcorn like that, but like the caramel popcorn that it made like yeah. I would just throw them in things. Hence why we have bowls and stuff, guys. That's why we have the bowls. So that's what we're selling. But again, they knew everything. They come in knowing that they're going to buy, and that's where we're at. Um, so the pricing packet we kind of went through. Make sure you guys have a pricing packet ready to go, and all that is is just a sheet. Um, I just change. Uh, you can either leave the top with your name only, or I just change it for like um, Michaela and Emilio's wedding. Who? Oh, I can't write. I can't see. Filming. They, they have a pricing sheet. Yeah. And there's a lot of different places where you can buy candles. Right. So do they kind of dicker with you knowing that they, they have a copyright too? So they can order their own candles. They have a copyright. Them. Everything that I order comes from a pro lab only, that only I can get from a pro lab. They can never get it as a consumer unless they're a photographer. Um, my viewing with Travis's family is a lot different than my viewing with a wedding that I shot yesterday. Because I already already know that, dude, you can just get it on your own. Like, and I'm just real with people and I photograph photographers' weddings, but anybody else, they can't get it because you have to sign up for MPix Pro. You have to sign up for um, Miller's Lab to, to do all that stuff. They can't do it, and that's the beauty of it. Um, if they're going to be that nitpicky about it and just they don't care, then you're not going to sell to them. But you've already made your money. But remember, you've already charged them the full amount. So my wedding, this wedding's $4,000 minimum. If I can get them, get them in to spend another $1,000 more, $500 more, that's just extra money. And that's how I have to think of it. So I spend an extra hour with you. I get 500 more bucks. I already did the work. Why not? That's how you have to think about it. Um, you never get that kickback from people saying, oh, Costco, you get it. Right, right. And, you know, I, and I go very quickly with that when they're like, well, what's the difference when you and Costco? And I'm like, mine's a pro lab. My products met, stand the test of time. I can put a personal guarantee on it because my lab will do that. If you print at Costco, Costco's meant to be fast. I mean, they're great for four or five months. But after that, they're done, they're gone. And that's just explained to them. You don't have to pull out a Costco sample, which people do. They're like, this is Costco and this is my lab. Like, nobody cares about that. Don't be petty about it. Just say, there's a reason that this is pro. People know when they go out to eat, if they order a steak at Denny's, it's not gonna be a steak from like the Harris Steakhouse, right? They know that, but they're not gonna, you know, they don't question it. They don't go like, oh, this steak is gross. Like, it's, you're at Denny's. This is what happened. So yeah, just make sure, and then, um, price out where, you know, your pricing's your pricing. So basically that's what it is. So, um, yeah, I'm not even, I don't know if you guys took pictures of mine, but like, I have like the most popular one, 24 by 36, um, 450 normally, and it's 382 discounted, USB engagements, uh, I mean, yeah. And I just keep it very simple on my stuff. You can create a packet if you want, you can create whatever you want. Uh, this is what they're gonna fill out. You're ultimately gonna take this home. So you actually give them copyright to all the full res JPEGs? Only weddings, oh, and okay. I give them a limited copyright. $5,000. Right, and that's the right what they're paying for, and it's a limited copyright. They can do anything with the photo except for sell them okay. or edit them. So they can't alter them and they can't make money from them. They can print them, share them, post them, things that they'll do anyways, um, but they're in my contract. It says that, that it's a limited. Right, uh, and even on like Zenfolio, even if they were to download it, there's a cool thing that they have that actually the first image shows that exact copyright. You can write whatever you want in it. And then when I sell that, when I give them a USB, they actually get a physical card that says what they can and can't do in lawyer terms, and on the back it's layman terms. Okay. So if they take it to Costco and Costco's like, you can't print these, they just pull out that card and say. Um, but yeah, but portraits, no. Portraits, remember, I just, session fee, they get nothing. They have to come in to buy stuff. Okay. And that's key. You just have a shoot fee for 95. 95 session fee, 95. studio, anywhere, an hour of my time. And you don't give them access to the gallery before? Nope. So, so the viewing and then do you- And the wait? viewing and then there's a couple tricks that you can do after. Mm -hmm. So of course, if you show them the photos before the viewing, they're not gonna come to the viewing. That's, yeah, that's what it is. So saying. you show them and then you say, all right guys, well, I'm gonna place this uh, order for you tonight. It'll be here within the next, give yourself time, seven to 14 business days, I don't care, whatever. You know, Miller's Lab takes two days. You can order through uh, Pixels and Ink or uh, Pitch Black Printing, they can drop it here off in like two or three days, whatever, wherever you guys wanna get, they don't need to know. Um, just tell them it's a pro lab. And then after that, you can send them a gallery and say, hey, thank you guys so much again. Your prints are on their way. Here is a gallery. If you guys missed anything or want to share it with any friends or family, please do that. The gallery's up for 30 days to, to extend it. It can be an extra blah, blah, blah. 
we all know with Zenfolio, it's free forever. Um, I never, but you can change the privacy, you can make it private or public or whatever. Um, I just leave my gallery open forever when they're done. And then I do a couple sales throughout the year where I send emails out to everybody and say, here's a code with 40% off all your stuff in your gallery. And then Black Friday, and then I just did it one in May. So May and then uh, November, I do 40% off everything in your gallery. Um, and I pull an extra two or three thousand dollars in that week. And that that works. Like yeah. my because you shot oh, totally. yeah, my, my family members. Your like, mother in law tried to spend <laughs> yeah. Were you with me at that wedding? No. The beach retreat, the really cold one? Oh yeah. Uh yeah, I called your wife yeah. because your 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 mother in law sent me an email and she's like, I'm trying to buy all these images. She's trying to buy like eight thousand dollars worth of digitals. <laughs> it was, it was crazy. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, all right, what's the play here? Are we just going to say, go for it, here's a coupon code, 30% of that? <laughs> but then I called Lorraine, and I'm like, you have access to all the digital, just give her the code, and she can get it. But then she ended up spending like a whole bunch of money on prints and stuff like no, those, that. Those emails, like, just confused She was me. about to spend, like, $4,000 yeah. on digital. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, that's what I charge for the wedding. Yeah. Some of those panties are rich. Yeah. yeah it was, it was well, yeah, I had one wedding, um, actually one portrait session, and they ended up buying, because I, I removed the, U, the full access USB option, so each digital is 30 bucks regardless. They ended up buying like 70 digitals. Um, and I just was like, this is awesome. Like 2,500 bucks I just made. Damn. Um, yeah, but many, yeah. How many poses did you have? I don't do poses. I do, uh, <laughs> that's very JCPenney talk of you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get four poses? <laughs> I never understood the poses too. Cause like when you're shooting, I'm like very organic. And I'm like, yeah, just do this. Maybe give me a this. Like, is this a pose? You can buy four pictures from this pose. You cannot do this, sir, because this is a different pose. But I never understood that. So, no, so um, any portrait shoot that I do, it's an hour shoot. I will, I'm an overshooter. Everybody knows this. I don't, it's digital. It's free. I don't care. But I'll shoot like five or 600 images during a portrait session. And my goal is 10 to 20% of those. So let's say 120 images I show them. Um, and if you do a proofing system, you can show them quicker. Basically, pick the images you guys like. Now I'll edit them and order them for you tonight. Um, and digital's can be on your pricing sheet as well. Um, just make sure you have that. Uh, but yeah, so uh, for them, there was about 120 images. They bought a good amount of them. And it was, it was like a large family. And then, you know, some with just kids, some with just... So the, that posing thing, that's also something that bugs me about it. Is because when I am... Oh, um, if somebody comes up to me... And, so you know how some people charge with the amount of posing and maybe the amount of people? I think we've talked about this before. Right, stuff like that. I welcome that. If you want to change your clothes and do the whole thing again, that's just, they have to buy both. They're going to buy both. If you want a picture with grandpa and grandkids, and then you want one with grandma and grandkids, and then grandpa, grandma with grandkids, <laughs> that's three photos that I just sold you. But people go, oh, if you add another person, it's another $20. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are we doing that? Like, let them bring us, if you want a picture of this car, you know, stuff like that. So the more poses you can get somebody, the more money they're ultimately going to spend. Does that make sense? See, so don't limit your poses. Don't limit. Just limit your time. Like how much time you're going. Don't be there for three hours. That time is the, yeah. the Nigerian family I just shot here last week. Three different outfits. Uh, there was six of them, um, and they ended up. Mom had like a purple Nigerian outfit and a white Nigerian outfit, and they kept changing in between. No, I have to. Now I have to be white because my husband's white. <laughs> I have to be purple because she's purple. And so I'm like, do it. I'm like, change it up. And the son was sitting here not doing anything. So I'm like, get a picture of you. Let's do this. The more you can do, the better. It's my Nigerian son. What were you saying? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. So. You gotta work on that Nigerian accent. Purple. Purple. I like the purple. Um. This is actually a really cool skill trick. Find a reason to leave the room after this point. Um, hey, take another look. Think about what you guys want to buy. I have this pricing sheet here. I'm going to just set this on the table. You guys add whatever you want. I'm going to go grab some more coffee. You guys want anything? Okay, cool. Leave. Sit out here for five minutes. You don't have to do anything. Go outside. Go make a phone. I don't care what you do. Text. So for five minutes or so? Yeah. Give them time to digest in that room. Uh, be, you know, if you could be a fly in that wall at that time, right? I heard this from Zach and Jody. Um, Oh man, yeah. Yeah. Just let them do that because they're gonna go, oh, you know, we, we forgot. Or sometimes it'll backfire, but hopefully it doesn't. Like, oh, that's way too much, babe. What are you doing? Yeah. We're going to Costco. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the digitals, let's go to Costco. And so, side note, there's nothing wrong with selling digitals. Sell them at a price knowing that you're never gonna see a single cent of profit from that again. Mm -hmm. So if you sell somebody the digital, it's they're gonna give it to auntie, they're gonna give it to uncle, they're all gonna print their own thing. 
it has to be a number that you're okay with going, I'm never gonna see it from again. And from one file, mine's 30 bucks. Yours could be 50, it could be 10, it could be five. But just know that it's never gonna come back to you. So if somebody wants to buy 10 digitals for me, that's 300 bucks. I'm like, all right, that's cool. It took me three seconds to edit. So when you sell digitals, so do you ever tell them that, I mean, the labs, most people, they don't get their monitors right. It's like, I hate it when I sell digitals and then they go to some place. And they, and some crappy like, place. And you saw the print later on, you go, Right, and you know, that's, we, we lightly explain that, you know, basically why, why are they printing through me? But also have some labs locally that if you sell digitals that you can refer them to. So I always go to Pitch Black Printing and then Pixels and Ink and I say, uh, Megan and Hunter are amazing. Go to them, this is some of their stuff. If you're buying the digital, I'd rather you print through them. I tell them, don't go to Costco, don't go to the one hour places because their machines are amazing but they're not calibrated for quality, they're calibrated for speed. And in turn, there's mistakes. But you can calibrate your monitor too, though. They don't know that. <laughs> don't tell them that. You can. So actually, if you go to Costco.com, yeah. uh, put in your information, and you go through the printing gallery, you can actually calibrate yeah, your, you can calibrate your monitor. yeah your monitor to their printing stats. And if you print through your monitor or print through your your system, everybody gets a serial. Then it'll actually alter and change. So basically, if it's coming out too magenta, too blue, too whatever, you can actually bring it back. So you have two choices, like with Costco, to say if you want to use your own thing or do you want us to right. color correct or, or auto, auto yeah right. and most people most people say auto, auto. but I, I don't because I don't mean, have yeah I've seen it before but yeah I mean Costco is a really good thing for toss away prints for shutterfly prints where you just need to print a hundred of something I mean yeah there's a reason it's 13 cents and if, and I got this argument with a client uh, a few months ago and I, and I ended up just giving up on it but basically Jeremy why do you get to charge four dollars for a nine by six or um Nine dollars for a four by six when Costco does thirteen cents, and I say, well, I'm not selling paper. I'm putting my work on paper. If you want, it, if you want me just to sell you the paper, then I'll sell it if you for a dollar, and you can find a way to get that ink on there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's ultimately what it is. We're not selling paper, guys. We're not paper salesmen. Right. We're putting our work. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have like. I mean, that's like going up to. Has anybody ever done this? Go up to Van Gogh and be like, dude. That canvas is like 15 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to make that canvas so special? And I made that analogy to them and they're like, you're not Van Gogh. And I'm like, okay, whatever, I'm not Van Gogh. But you guys remember, I don't know, I posted the, that little oh, saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it Picasso or Van Gogh? I can't remember. Picasso. But yeah, some lady's like, draw me something real quick on this napkin. <laughs> and he draws it and he draws it and he goes, all right, this is $10,000. And she's like, it took you two minutes to do. And he's like, no, it took me 60 years to do, 15 years or whatever. And, but then nobody understands that. They're like, that's a napkin. You're just gonna throw it out anyways. And then I would eat it. <laughs> Leave the room. We left the room. We come in, we snag payment. Um, make sure you have a way to take payment, guys. Square is awesome and amazing and only charges you when you use it. Um, everybody should have a Square on their account, on their phone. Um, always have the, the reader with you and just swipey, swipey. Um, you total everything up, give them a copy of it if you need to, take a picture, whatever. Do you encourage, like it sounds like you encourage Square, but do you give a, uh, a little bit of discount to give you cash? No. But you don't, okay. Yeah, how do you? So guys, here's, here's the law for you. Here's a little bit of law. You cannot charge a fee to them for using a credit card. Yeah, you can. You cannot. That's why there's things that are called cash discounts. And the easiest way to realize it is when you go to the gas station, there's a cash only price and there's a credit price. That's why they do that to get around the law. You can do the same thing for anything you charge. You want to pay me cash? 90 bucks. If you want to pay me car? 95 bucks. It's usually five or six cents cheaper by giving cash to you. Right. And ultimately, here's how I think of credit cards. First off, it's a write-off. It's a business cost. If you guys are going to accept credit cards, you're going to be paying a fee. But ultimately, people will spend more money using a card because they do not have that physical income in their checking account. If I had an uh, a American Express card and I had $5,000 ready to spend on it, and my checking account only had maybe 200 that I could spend, I would rather pay a fee if they spent $3,500 on a card and pay a $100 fee than just make $200 total. Yeah. So we don't think of your fee, don't think of it, just it's a fee. I, it sucks too, every year I think I pay like 70, last year was $7,200 in fees to credit cards. <gasps> but multiplies that 3% and who actually made. Right, yeah, shit That's crazy. Right. Here's another thing this mate told me right at the beginning. Don't sell out of your own wallet. Right. That makes sense. Can you explain that to them? Yeah, that just means that just because you only have Ooh, 10 bucks or 10 bucks in your wallet, right. you may have $10,000 in their wallet. Yeah. So and, and our value of what we think people should spend money on opposed to what their value is is totally different, right? A really good analogy is uh, you drive by an apartment 
complex and there is a uh, Ferrari in the front of it. The guy probably has a million dollars, a whole bunch of money to spend, but he values that car way more than he values where he lives. So somebody comes in and they may value these images way more than you expect them. Don't assume anything. This is a price, this is how much I charge. Let's do this. How do you wanna pay? I never, and I learned this from bartending and serving, when you, you assume that they're gonna buy something. So I walk in and I don't go, uh, do you wanna buy a canvas today? I go, how many canvases do you wanna buy? Yeah. When I used to sell wine, what, what bottle of wine did you guys want? Not, do you guys want a bottle of wine today? Never do that. Always assume they're buying something, always assume they will. You'll get in that habit of all the time. When somebody walks into a store, assume that, you, you know, if, you're, if you were with your fiance or wife or husband or whatever, you walk into a store, they already assume you're gonna buy something, that's their mentality. Um, what can I help you with today? Rather than, do you wanna buy anything? Do you have, you have money? You got money? <laughs> Why are you in here? <laughs> when you're going through the yes or no, you wanna make sure you ask the question yes or no. When you go to sales, stuff like that, you say stuff, that gives them not a yes or no. You don't right. have to say, no, I don't want a bottle of wine. No, I don't want right. this. You, 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 know, would, would you, you think you like the big canvas here that's yeah. 24 by 36? Or do you, or do you, do you like the 20 by 30? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's an assumption, and that's what we have to do. We have to assume. And then, you know, you guys will get it. You'll start to ask these questions generally. Um, just go in knowing that they're going to buy something, and you're just helping them pick it out. Maybe you're their friend. Maybe, you know, you're taking a friend to R.C. Willie to pick out a couch. Which couch do you want? Do you want this one or this one? And do you do the same thing? So very simple, very easy. Um, after this, you probably have five minutes, two minutes left, whatever. Thank them so much for coming in. Ask them if they want to hang out and more questions. And tell them you'll send them a follow-up email tomorrow. You've already got their money. You have their stuff. Your job now is to go home and either edit the photos, give them a timeline of how long it'll take, give yourself a little extra time so you don't have to edit it that night. Um, edit the photos if you have their proofs. Get everything ordered, get everything sent to them. Um, if you made a ton of money on it, consider making a nice package. Making a uh, MPix Pro has a $7 more, they'll send it to you in a gift box that you can wrap it up and make it nice and pretty. And then um, I love hand delivering prints to my clients. Um, you can also meet them here if you want. Um, but I love just going to their house and be like, here's your prints. You want to open it, take a look at it? And then get them a little more excited. And they're like, oh my God, these are beautiful. I'm like, yeah, look at these, they're awesome. You know, take a picture and send it to me when you put them up. And then that's your like, social media post. My client's new prints that they got. Um, but your follow-up email is key. The next day needs to be an email of everything you guys did, everything they can expect, and how to refer you out, how to review you, and how to book with you again. It's very important that this is your last chat with them. Does that make sense? Um, remember, all my clients come from referrals, and the only reason is, is because I tell them how to refer me, and I make them have a reason to come back to me. If you guys offer a discount at that time, hey, your next session is on me if you shoot within 30 days from now or 90 days. I used to do it a lot. If you shoot with me within 90 days from our last viewing, then the session fee is on me. $95 is on me. So if they refer somebody to you, do you give like Nothing. Okay. It's just for them. Just for yeah. them. Yeah. But you can. You can say, uh, refer them if they use your name, 50% off their session fee. Oh. Or, or a free... No, I don't like that. Like, sometimes people are like, oh, a free 8x10. I'm not a fan of going, guys, come on in. You get a free 8x10 and a 15-minute session with me. Like the value's not there for me. Um, and also what if they don't want an eight by 10? That's the risk of selling packages like that. Like if, some, if I'm, I have a package over $200 and it comes with uh, 10, 10 digitals, eight by 10, two five by sevens and a four by six or whatever in a book. Um, what if I don't want that? Will you give me a discount? Can I get 11 by 14 instead of eight by 10? And then those, those become questions and those become like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I mean, how much is it going to cost me to get you an 11 by 8 14 rather than 8 by 10? The deal was an 8 by 10. Get the 8 by 10. And that's what I said. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's the end of it. Oh, that's it. it was I, there. I have one more question. The, uh, yeah. So, friends and family, do you do stuff around no. that? No. So, never. So, mm -hmm. so you're, like, a family member comes to you and they're like, I really want to. Unless they want to be part of it. So I use my session fee as my leverage for everything. Uh -huh. If I know that they're going to spend a lot of money, if I'm thanking them for something, then I'm gifting them that session fee. Because prints are where you're making your money. Prints, the, yeah. The session fee is really, that's your... Session fee is a retainer. It's extra money. If I they don't order anything, that's cool. At least it was an hour of my time and I made 95 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, you always collect that first, you said. It's a retainer. Money, yeah. money spent is money for right. Money. It's with the contract. And I also do a contract every single shoot, paid or not. Always do a contract. Also, know that of any of the digitals that they do on my contract, if they decide to sell it or put it on a t-shirt and try to profit from it, there is a $300 per use 
fee that I charge them, and that goes comes from a lawyer. And so it's in my contract. It's like they're like, well, what if I do this? I'm like, well, and then I also have a way to sell them a full copyright. I'm like, if you want the full copyright where you can do whatever you want with it, it's 500 bucks, and I don't get any say in it. You can sell a crap ton of it. You can give it to Gap. I don't care what you do. Mm -hmm. 500 bucks. But if they don't do that and they go back on the other end, that's that's a sad day for them. <laughs> that's a sad day, bitches. Do they pay the session fee when they book? Uh, in order to book the shoot, session fee and contract must be in my hand. So we can say, yeah, I have, I have the third open. Here's your contract, here's your session. And I, I remember I have Pixify, so I do everything online. Um, so, but yeah, I highly recommend that. Do not schedule yourself out. Uh, and you've had this issue with people not showing up because there's no, there's no reason for them not to show up. There's no, if they don't show up, they're like, oh, I just wasted their time. Like, whatever. You're, they're not out. Even if it's like 20 bucks. People will come in for 20 bucks. Uh, but yeah, they're like, oh, sorry, something came up. I can't make it. And you're like, I've been waiting here for 30 minutes. I mean, that's happened to me where I've waited for shoots for two hours. And I'm like, I'm going to leave. And they call me. I'm on my way. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. It's a free trade shoot. And I'm an idiot. And I'm like, okay, okay. Instead of just leaving. You should just leave. What if they cancel or reschedule after they write? So in your contract, there has to be an amount of time that they cancel to get their retainer back. They reschedule. It's your option within your contract as well to either put that towards the future or charge them some sort of fee. If they're canceling the day before and rescheduling, then there's going to be a fee. Because, especially if it's like prime days, anytime like right now around 6 p.m., if I have a shoot for Sunday, um, and my weekends are booked for the next three months, you can't get at me with a weekend at all. And if somebody does not show up on there, and they go, I need to reschedule, and I'm like, well, you're still paying a fee because I held this prime spot for you that I could have booked somebody else that would have shown up. And that's how you have to think about it. So we got to get out of this nice person mode. We can still be nice about it. It's business. Um, the same thing will happen to them. They're nice until, until it's business. Well, keep my money back. You didn't do the shoot. Mm, TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to show you a fine, but it's there. Um, what questions do we have for selling? Does everybody feel like they can do this or start this? What do you guys think? I'm ready to make money. Good. Pretty easy. So you guys can charge what you're charging. If you have a package already built, then this is just for them to buy more stuff on top of that package. Or maybe even start picking stuff for their package, and then you sell them maybe a little bit more stuff, right? So their package comes with, why are you laughing? Because of the same package? No, no, no. Okay. I'm just, I'm just stoked. He's <laughs> over here like, <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro said package. I, I waited, because uh, uh, the client's asking me for prices, and I waited, I'm like, just, just give me until Monday evening to figure this out. Nice. <laughs> Because I, I feel like prices have always been a, a really tough thing for me. Like, it's, it's really easy to get. Simplest way is 400% of what you're selling. If your lab's charging you, well, within reason. If your lab's charging you a dollar for a 4 by 6 you need to be selling at least $4. But then you have to look at that $4 and be like, eh, I probably should go up to like 6 mm -hmm. The higher you go up, the less that percentage goes down. So if this canvas costs you yeah. 500 bucks, you're not going to charge them $2,000 for that. You can bring it down to 1100 or 1200 for that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Within reason. Mm -hmm. So the higher the, the higher the price for me, the less that percentage goes. The lower it is, the higher. I honestly don't want people buying four by sixes from me. So I sell it for nine bucks. And I go, oh, I'll just buy the digital for 30 and you can get as many four by sixes as you want. <laughs> but I want to sell the 24 by 36s, I want to sell those. And that was an older question, because uh, you said you don't you don't do any normal, like smaller prints uh, for weddings. What if somebody's just insistent and they just I I just don't want to deal with it? Can you order four by sixes for me? Yes. Do you, so Nine you, bucks each. You will do that. Yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. So, yeah. So, but that's not in your sheet. So, oh, so, so sorry guys. So um, I still use Zenfolio. So basically after this viewing, I send them all the images. I still create the gallery. Zenfolio is an ordering gallery as well. Mm -hmm. So if it goes onto there, then they can order from there. For with weddings, I'm not selling everything that I have. I'm only focused on canvases and albums. Everything else they can buy normal price. Anytime they want through that gallery. So you just insist that they use Zenfolio at that point. That's yeah. I don't. I don't do it here. I don't do it here. This is only for portraits where I do the the different sizes. For weddings, since they've already bought the digitals, I know they're most likely going to take those digitals and get four by sixes, give them away, mm -hmm. five by sevens. I don't even care about that because I, I don't want to sit there and go, I want one four by six of this, one four by six of this, and I'm like, okay, shit. That's like ten four by sixes. I don't even know what this is, damn it. Here, so like, yeah, so Zenfolio, JeremyMoon.com. Um, I'll just let it go wherever. Questions? 
you have a comment? Yeah. Uh, for you guys, when you are picking prices, one thing that I did, I went to the fix by Credit Co. And maybe what she did, she actually printed out a pricing sheet for the year of what she's going to be charging me. Right. So then I can be charging the 400% to my client. And simple, guys, 400%, just multiply that by four. Yeah. What if it's a dollar, multiply by four, four dollars. What I did uh, last year is I actually talked to him about changing the pricing of what I was doing because I felt that I was, in, I was selling more digital than prints. So I upped the digitals. I brought the prints to a reasonable price where people are actually buying the prints. And I'm, sell, you know, I'm, I'm getting charged like three bucks, two bucks, or whatever at Pitch Black, and I'm selling them for $13, 14 and that's where your sales coming because like the other day I did a military father daughter dance. I took in about $400 um, from pre-orders the day of. People ordered later on and then I ended up spending $60 but I ended up taking in $400 and just that event. So talk to Megan and she will get you a price. That's gonna you can email them and she'll send it to you. I yeah. order through them, just send her. And she actually, they, they network with us as well so they have a special hatch price. As long as you tell me part of Hatch, I think they give us a little discount. Do um, we have the card here? Yeah, yeah it's up front, uh, Megan, but it's pitch black printing. And I, I wanted to make something for here, like she did before. She's the one that used to have in the old Hatch. I don't know if you guys remember the piping. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. That was cool, That's but it doesn't fit here. Her and she, I mean, yeah, I use them for, well, all my prints right here are through them. That one. You need to get some better tape on these. I know. Every time I come in, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Just putting on everybody else's prints. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, yeah, so having prices for your guys' prints anyway should be huge enough. Like I've always said from the beginning, people need to assume that you charge, otherwise you're never going to make money. Um, if people are messaging you going, hey, I wanna do a shoot, and that money never comes up, that's your fault. Be like, here, what's your email? I'll send you my price sheet, my pricing sheet. And uh, those of you who I've worked with, um, I ask you a lot of questions on your pricing, you send me stuff, we go back and forth and we create our pricing sheet. So if you guys are still in that process or need help with pricing, let me know and I'm happy to work on that with you guys. Um, but you need to have a pricing sheet. You need to have something on the whim. Like right now, if I were to be like, how much do you charge for a family session? I need something that I can look at. I don't need a, um, 150 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I'm gonna go to Costco. Do you do different pricing sheets for different, so senior photos? No. Uh, so guys, I'm a, I'm a simple dude. And remember, the more information you give somebody, uh -huh. It's a no. My first pricing sheet was six pages long. Oh my God. It was stupid. It was senior photos, headshots, headshots for one person, two person, <laughs> family sessions from four, six people now. And again, I didn't know why. I just did that. I saw what people are doing. Weddings, engagements. And for some reason, like, engagements were more than portraits or family pictures. I have then changed it. So whenever I talk to you guys about pricing, I always talk about my time. My time is worth X amount of dollars. My time is worth $300 an hour. My, it's my goal. So if I do a shoot and I edit it, my goal is to make $600. And let's say everything takes two hours, an hour shoot, hour edit, what all that junk. It, I need to make at least $600 per shoot in order for that to be somewhat successful for me. Um, and that's what I want. If I make $400, am I going to be sad about it? No. But that's what I want. Um, so now I have a session fee. It gets me for an hour of your time. And you order what you want after. So if that's a senior photo or an engagement or whatever, it's still an hour of my time and I rock it out. Do you charge 95 for an hour? for an hour, yeah. Do you ever do more than an hour? Yeah, so if they, if they send me like their, uh, and we just charge $95 more. Per hour? Yeah, and it's per hour on the hour, not half hour. So if somebody's like, we just want a quick shoot, it'll only be like 30 minutes, oh cool, 95 bucks. I get that all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 95 bucks. We only want this. Yeah. It's a really simple That's thing. how people try to bring, you know, you know, like, as reminds me of the Chris Rock thing, like, like $4.99 for nuggets? What if I just want one nugget? What if I just get one nugget? That's my Chris Rock. Hold up. So I have a comment, I didn't try to get it, so maybe you explained it before, but there's a lot of, um, I mean, you're talking about, like, you're asking what the song is created for the first dance, and yeah. you put that on your music. That's for weddings only. That's for weddings only, I understand, but, okay, so we're all artists and sort of musicians, mm -hmm. and um, most of that music that you get online is not royalty-free music, though. It's not, but we're not using it. It's illegal to use it, 
Right. If I throw it in there, if I sell them a slideshow with that music, then, then, then you have to buy it through like three, what is it, three scoops music or whatever. Triple scoop. Triple, triple scoop music. Right. But if I'm using it in a slideshow, and I've actually researched that. So if I'm using the slideshow or if I own it, if I bought it through uh, Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, right. you can use it in there. But I'm, but I'm not selling. As long as you're not selling it, it's right. okay. It's right? the same thing as if we were just playing music in here when you walk through. Sure you've done the research? Yes, yeah. I actually emailed them too. So know that, so guys, what he's talking about is a copyright song. Um, you'll know that if you try to put like a video on Facebook and you have music in the background, they'll sometimes take it off because of that song. The, the way to get past that is buying that song copyright and it's 60 bucks usually uh, per song. So if you're a videographer, that price is included in their pricing. So videographers use two or three songs that they like and they can buy it one time and use a whole bunch, but it's usually 60 bucks. Um, but yeah, with I, so iTunes specifically um, and, Pan, and Spotify, those are the only ones I've researched. I'm fine. I'm game. But I don't use Spotify in there. I only use, I have like 30 songs that I bought through iTunes and I just stream that music. Um, but yeah, but that's why I gave the example of Slideshow because when I was actually talking to Apple, that's what they said. If, you, if you're selling it, if you're selling them any type of commercial product using the song to sell it, then that's when you have to pay for it. And if you guys are worried, then buy the six songs, spend 300 bucks on those songs, and then have them forever. Yeah, you can get the deals okay. from Triple Scoop all the time. When you sign up for, yeah, like even there's that Foley, I think you get 10 free songs they when you start. Yeah, they give you so many free songs. Yeah. Right? I think it's yeah. 50 and, or something. And I, I, yeah. The point is that we're all artists, and we, we, we think that, you know, it's like, oh, does your doctor, oh, what, do they, what do you do? You pay them money, right? Oh. Is your lawyer, what do they want? Pay, oh, when you go to the restaurant, pay money. Right. Oh, you're an artist. Oh, we'll just give you great exposure. It's just exposure. I, I accept I exposure see, bucks. Musicians are, they get screwed all the time. Right. Because we treat them like other people treat us. And that's how it is. I mean, through like my YouTube, I found a company that does music for YouTube. And all I have to do is credit him. So yeah. he throws throw his credit on the thing. So if you guys are worried about that, you're more than welcome to throw a credit. Like in a slideshow, if you use music all the time, throw a credit in there. Music behind, you know. You can learn never know, but like the triple scoop or whatever you yeah. use that. And triple scoop has music that are popular and they also have the like the fifty free or music that's not popular. Yeah, never was ever heard of, but it's good music. <laughs> <laughs> they have like hundred different categories. Right. right. You have depressing weddings, yeah. exciting weddings. Yeah. It's a But it's fun. it's it's all yeah. It's all something to think about. And what's even cooler is if you have a local musician friend that can make you songs, why not? And then credit the shit out of him. I want you guys to I don't know if everybody was here, or some people were here. My good buddies that, that did their right. open house. I don't think anybody's referred anybody to them, and they're just really. I don't think anybody's. Oh, yeah. Them well, yeah, yeah, we yeah. have. Yeah. We have their cards up here. It just never comes up with me. I just don't know if anybody's called them. Yeah, I yeah, well, yeah. It's gonna be the thing. Yeah. <laughs> they, they yeah. Charge, they charge less than a DJ. That's, right. That's what's amazing. I'll push so them out to weddings. I mean, and, and they sound like there's a four because they play every instrument. Those guys. That's it, guys. I'm gonna talk about. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.